Give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. So Forgotten Friendship recently came out, and if you're expecting me to talk about it here, you really need to get your eyes checked. I don't want to talk about Forgotten Friendship. It's the usual shit we're getting from Friendship is Magic post Rainbow Rocks. The villain wants to burn down the world because she's sad, and rather than holding her down while Sunset repeatedly kicks her in the face, they offer friendship and everything is forgiven. Except it gets better. Wallflower's big reason for going kill crazy is because nobody ever remembers her and she slips into the background. But she admits at the end of the film that she's been actively erasing introductions and public speaking on her part from everyone's memories, so it's entirely her fault that nobody remembers her. I swear they're just trying to see what they can get away with when the audience immediately shuts their brain off upon seeing their new waifu. My point is, is that Forgotten Friendship can fuck off and I want to talk about Legend of Everfree instead. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce you to a concept you're probably already aware of. TV Tropes calls it NARM, and because my name for it is too long, so will I for the remainder of this video. NARM is the state at which cheesy dialogue and overacting reaches critical mass. Okay, it's actually when something you're supposed to take seriously is unintentionally funny, but most of the time it's just a neutral scene that people think is supposed to be taken seriously because that's just the world of discourse we live in now. NARM is basically Tim Curry's entire career summed up in one word, and even Tim Curry himself. I mean, just look at that smile. That is a smile that says, I have a fish hook in my eyebrow and I like it. NARM is what turns a good villain into a great villain. All of the best villains are NARMy as fuck and loving every second of it. I won't touch Barton, not until I make him kill you. Slowly, intimately. You are not God. Blasphemy. You're lucky I don't cast you out or smite you or something. Where is your army of the light? You see, darkness is the heart's true essence. If there's ever a piece of writing advice you should take from me, it's that your villains should always be chewing all the scenery all the time. If chewing the scenery doesn't fit your very serious and brooding villain, you should check your anal cavity because I think there's a long stick in it. The best villains are always ham and cheese sandwiches. Stay cool, bird boy. And that brings us to the most underrated entry in Friendship is Magic, Equestria Girl's Legend of Everfree. I don't recall Legend of Everfree being appreciated all that much. I myself had rather lukewarm feelings toward it when it first came out. I mean, as much as I'm about to gush, the film isn't exactly a masterpiece. It's paced like an ant pushing a brick across a desert. That whole thing with Timber and Twilight was creepy and unsettling on release, and in retrospect is even worse. And way too much time is wasted on Twilight moping about how she did a bad last year. And also when Twilight finally does the magic transformation thingy, she doesn't keep her void form and that's still pisses me off because her void form is cool. Speaking of void form, they turned her void form into its own entity separate from Twilight as opposed to being an impulsive response to an overload of stress and rage it was back in Friendship Games, aka they made void form less interesting. But on the opposite end of that spectrum, Legend of Everfree is definitely the funniest of the four Equestria Girls films, especially when everyone is discovering their new magic, and also it's shiptastic outside of the creepiness. It wasn't my fault! Let me help you get your harness off. No, thank you! Seriously, this movie is just the most. They make a joke about nail bombs at one point. Like seriously, Pinky's new magic is making things explode when she throws them, and then she throws a box of nails and everyone hits the deck in complete terror. And speaking of comedy and being the most, Legend of Everfree features the greatest character to ever touch this garbage fire mess of a series and who I love very much and who gave me hope in my life again because they're just so hammy and over the top and beautiful. Yes, you know the one, you guys. Wallflower Blush, who did nothing wrong. Actually, no, Wallflower can go die in a hole. It's Gloriosa Daisy. I'll admit to not thinking much of Gloriosa at the time of her debut. She was another villain of the day for Equestria Girls who would show up, turn into a monster whose concept artist is clearly deserving of a raise, do some magic, and then come down from the sugar rush being all apologetic. She was effectively a repeat of Twilight Sparkle from Friendship Games. At the time of her release, she wasn't really considered impressive. Nobody hated her, but she didn't really bring a whole lot new to the table. My, how the times have changed. Gloriosa is practically refreshing in hindsight. Friendship is Magic has aggressively chased the idea idea of villain redemption through vague offering of friendship and the idea of doing new things with their antagonist has completely gone down the plug hole. So after multiple instances in a row of my friends abandoned me so I'm gonna burn down the world until someone agrees to be my friend, going back to one of two instances of impulsive villainy is like biting into a delicious chocolate cake after years of eating nothing but plain oatmeal. Gloriosa is like a bullseye in every element that makes a fun character. She's energetic, she's funny, she's always two heartbeats from a brain aneurysm. Seriously, she's just 
the best. First of all, let's be honest here. The thing bronies care about the most when it comes to any character in this franchise is the faces they can turn into internet memes. Sonata's dead-eyed stare, Rarity doing a screm, Starlight denying her collusion with Russia. If you make a derpy face, the fandom loves you. With Gloriosa, that is damn near every frame of animation she has. Seriously, pause the movie anytime she's on screen and count how many times she isn't making a face. I don't think we'll see a character mug for the camera this much until the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is released on Blu-ray. Whoever animated this woman deserves a raise. Whoever does her voice, too. I just don't know that I'm quite ready to give up my weekly trips to the spa. To the spa? To the spa! Everything about Gloriosa is one big ham and cheese sandwich even before she turns into a Joel Schumacher villain. And then she does turn into a Joel Schumacher villain. And oh my god, the cheese. The unbelievable cheese. She's like Poison Ivy and Anthony C had a baby. Like, bruh. Bruh. You know, I've warmed up to Stand Forever Free over the last few months. I know I put it on the worst musical number list, but that video was finished before this travesty saw the light of day. And if I could go back, I'd just swap it out entirely. Also, out of all the demon transformations so far, I think Gloriosa's is my favorite. Twilight's void form is still up there, but the nature-themed design of Gloriosa's feels more creative and appropriate, and less like they just wrote Sephiroth on a chalkboard and went from there. I mean, let's be honest here, the biggest appeal of Equestria Girls is someone turning into a demon. Even that mirror magic short managed to work it in there somewhere. It's kind of baked into the formula at this point. Someone turns into a demon, everyone ponies up to fight the demon, so the demon itself had damn well better be fucking cool. I mean, what are you gonna do? Not have the villain of the day turn into a demon? Now that's just crazy talk. The demons are fun. Not having demons would be a terrible idea. Good thing Hasbro understands this. Also, here's something to consider. Everyone's always asking me how to do the starlight model of villains properly, and Gloriosa is exactly how you do that. The big problem with MLP villains post-starlight is that they come in already being villains with some kind of limp-handed excuse for why they went comically overboard given in the third act. And then all it takes is a vague offering of friendship and then redemption. Gloriosa subverts all of this. First of all, her reasons for turning to villainy isn't just some past event from her childhood that's revealed to us at the end of the film. It happened just before the movie starts, and explained to us before she goes full metamorphosis. Secondly, it's not something unbelievably pathetic like my friends abandoned me, or my friend moved away, or I wasn't respected enough, or I kept erasing my meetings with other people and now I'm angry that they don't remember me. Gloriosa's big crisis is that Filthy Rich wants to shut down the camp that's been in her family for generations and bulldoze it to replace it with a spa. It's not just feeling sad, there's actually something at risk. It's a problem that needs solving, and she doesn't jump to the most extreme solution until literally every other option has been exhausted. Well, okay, not every option. The true antagonist is a greedy rich bastard, so you could always just kill him and redistribute his wealth, but no, apparently that's not appropriate for a children's show. You no vision. Regardless, even after having the magic drained from her and friendship offered, her problems don't just go away. There's still Filthy Rich wanting to destroy the camp unless she can come up with enough money and that needs solving. It's not just offer friendship suddenly good, no, they actually have to put in some effort to save Camp Everfree. Gloriosa has so far been the answer to every problem that Hasbro's been having over the years. Somewhere along the line, the showrunners got extremely lazy and threw away their imaginative ideas in favor of chasing one very dull and drab idea. Namely, that all you need is friends to make your life complete. People make the defense of these decisions as, well, the show is about friendship after all, but somewhere down the line, friendship stopped meaning anything. It became this nebulous state of being where you either have friends or you don't. From season one to Rainbow Rocks, it actually meant something to have friends. Your friends were there for you in tangible ways to help you through your actual problems. Legend of Everfree was the last gasp of that idea. Gloriosa's fall into abusing magic comes from a real place. She's going to lose literally everything. And what ultimately redeems her isn't the offering of a hand in friendship, it's the promise that, no, you won't lose everything, we're going to help you. That actually means something. As time has gone on, the showrunners have dropped the tangibility of friendship and the effort it takes, opting instead for villains who don't have friends but want them, or who abandon friendship entirely. Friendship is treated like the force. You either have it and everything's great, or you don't and it sucks, and all nuance has been just sapped out of this real thing that affects real people. Megan McCarthy once said in an interview that she keeps reforming all the villains because she doesn't believe a person is bad, they're just broken, and that if you can find out what it is that's broken them, then you can fix them. But Legend of Everfree is the only time this has actually happened. As I've said time and time and time again, the core problem with Starlight, Stygian, Tempest, Juniper Montage, and Wallflower Blush is that they freak out and go to unbelievable extremes 
for nothing. Gloriosa is not freaking out over nothing. Losing your entire childhood, something that has been your family's legacy for a hundred years, to a greedy fuck who wants to pave it and replace it with a spa explicitly to line his pockets with money? That's not nothing. You want to do sympathetic villains better, McCarthy? Here is your masterclass on how to do that. Give them actual problems. Nobody notices me, or I lost two friends when I was a kid, is not an actual problem. Nobody likes a melodramatic crybaby, so stop making them.